Okay, all right, we did, we're gonna do a blind taste test of the aged pheasant versus the non-aged. So ready, blind taste test. I don't know what I'm getting here. Option A. Open. It's delicious. Okay. Oh, that's the aged one. Yeah. Wow. For the last few years, I've been aging my game birds based off some advice that was given to me by a friend. It does add some extra work and worry to the butchering process, and so I decided this year I was gonna put the aging process to a little scientific test, a taste test. I wanted to know the difference between fresh pheasant and aged pheasant, scientifically speaking. Was it actually better? Or was I just kind of imagining that based off the amount of work I'd put into it? I decided I was going to do a blind taste test, and it was really important that I do this test blind. We know that for the scientific method to work, our opinions, our process, it needs to be unbiased. We have to put our existing knowledge and feelings aside and let the results prove the hypothesis true or false. Science needs to be clean, sterile, clinical, if it's going to work. And unfortunately, I was way too connected to the subject here to be clean or clinical with my opinions. I knew all the work that I had put into this meal. I didn't want the knowledge of that, the emotions tied up with that, to taint my results. You see, I knew the story of this meal, and often knowing the story behind the meal, it makes things taste better. Now that's not a scientific fact, it's just an understood truth of the universe. I can prove it to you. Anybody who's raised their own farm fresh eggs, they will without question swear that those farm fresh eggs taste better than the store-bought eggs. Do they really? Could you prove it with a double-blind, peer-review study? Maybe, and eh, maybe not. But it doesn't matter. There's no doubt in the farmer's mind that his eggs are better tasting than anything you can buy at the supermarket. It's funny because the story behind this meal started with an egg too. Not the farm fresh eggs that we made into an egg wash to dip the pheasant fillets in. Those eggs that we raised right here in our Pennsylvania farm. It started with the egg the pheasant hatched from. The pheasant that we flushed while it was in the field eating grasshoppers. Grasshoppers that my son noticed while we were processing the bird were still in his belly, undigested. What are those? Look at all that. Grasshoppers? No way. He's eating grasshoppers. That's so cool. A little gross, but pretty cool. But the story of this meal, it goes back even further than the egg that hatched that pheasant. Because the reason we brought the pheasant home was the fact that it was flushed by my bird dog, Bones, who's named after his older brother, Boone, my very first bird dog, who sadly died tragically. I don't really want to talk about that story today. Good boy, buddy. Oh, he didn't get it. That's okay, that was pretty good, dude. Right we can focus on Bones, the bird dog who I've had for the last three years now, who I've been training to find birds, flush birds, bring them home, so that we could have meals like this. Bones, whose nickname as a puppy was Lazy Bones, because I couldn't get him to even retrieve a ball. And now, he's a fantastic retriever. It's the story of training him, which I did back at our farm in Connecticut. The farm that we moved from this year to Pennsylvania. The first farm that we ever owned, where this whole homesteady journey began. It's the farm that we first raised pigs on. Two, two pigs is where it all started. And it was from the last batch of pigs that we raised back at Squash Hollow Farm uh, that we got the lard that we rendered to help cook the pheasant in, to add flavor, richness. A flavor you just couldn't get from the oil at the supermarket. A 
flavor that comes from lard from happy pigs raised outside munching on grass and bugs bathing in the sun on that little piece of land that we left behind. This meal has roots back at Squash Hollow Farm, our home in CT. Making this meal also helps make my new home kind of feel like home. Cooking alongside my kids, with my wife, in the apartment that you watched us design, talk about, plan, as we were preparing to move here to Pennsylvania. And then the apartment that you saw me help build alongside my dad and my really good friend. Working on the very kitchen that now me and my kids and my wife are working in together to put this meal on the table. That's all part of the story of this meal. That rich history, bittersweet memories, blood, sweat, tears, all make up the flavor of this meal. And we know them all so well. Just like those farm fresh eggs that you raised and you swear taste better than the ones at the supermarket, knowing the story of this food, knowing our story makes this meal taste better. And so I did a blind taste test because I knew far too much about this food to be objective. Oh, that's the aged one. Yeah. Wow. It has much more like rich flavor. No question. He was right. That was the aged one. You knew that right away. I, there was no question. The aged bird has a rich flavor and a complexity that the non-aged bird doesn't. The non-aged one is delicious, but it's just like regular tasting good. That aged pheasant is has depth, and I'm going to sit down and enjoy dinner with my family and stop talking on camera. So, There's no scientific study that can conclusively state whether growing your own food, hunting wild game, uh, living farm and field to plate is actually better for you. But remember, science is clean, it's sterile and clinical. Scientific studies don't make food taste better. Knowing the story always does. <laughs>